Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to this new series aimed squarely at Total Beginners to Pixing Site. First off, I think a little bit of background is important to this. I myself had a really rough start with Pixing Site. In fact, it was so bad, the uh, learning curve for me, that I almost quit before my trial period was even over. Now, it was confusing to operate. I frankly didn't know what I was doing. And when I tried to search online for help, most tutorials, unfortunately, seemed to be speaking pretty much a different language, which left me feeling disheartened, a little bit stupid perhaps, and overall maybe like this program just wasn't for me, it wasn't gonna work out. Now, luckily, it didn't turn out like that. I've never been much of a quitter, so I stuck in there and throughout many frustrating months uh, of repetition and repetition and repetition, and just learning by doing, uh, eventually I got to the point where I could undertake more complex processing tasks somewhat confidently. So with that out of the way, that kind of little introduction there, that's really the reason for these videos. I want to make the joy of Astro Image Processing uh, available to as many people as possible, as wide an audience as possible, because it shouldn't be just for the select few. I think everybody should be able to enjoy this. So that's what these videos in this series are going to be all about. I want to try and make easy to digest and easy to follow tutorials that basically anybody, even a total beginner to Pixing site, maybe it's your first day using the trial, you can follow along and hopefully finish with an image you can be proud of. So throughout the course of these videos in this series, we're going to be tackling a wide variety of processing jobs together from a multitude of different setups, and that's including one shot color and mono data too. So throughout all of these, I will be providing the data in the description boxes down below for each of these videos. So you can download that and you should have everything you need then to follow along side by side with me and process in tandem while watching the video at the same time. And hopefully, little by little, you will learn by doing. Now, this is the first tutorial, so why not start off as you mean to go on? And I've actually created a file which you'll be able to find in the description box for this video just down below, just down there. In that, you should find the main file that we're actually going to be working on, an M45 image in this case, and a small set of processing icons that you can load into your Pixin site and use uh, without having to search through and find these tools manually each time. Now, that's not all that you're going to need. Unfortunately, there are a few extra little bits that we need to touch upon right now, but these should be common throughout the entire series. And once you've done this once, They'll be done for all of them and all of your future processing jobs. So the first of these is going to be the easy processing suite from Dark Archon. Now you can find this again linked in the description box down below. On that site, it's basically just a repository where you can point Pixin site to it and it will download the associated files. No big issue and all the installation instructions are actually on the site right there. Finally, really the last thing that you're going to need is either Starnet 2, which is completely free, or Star Exterminator, which is paid software. That's the one that I'll actually been using as I think it does a slightly better job on average. Um, but basically you're going to need either one of these two installed, downloaded and working. So um, again, links to these will be in the video description box and also installation instructions are provided on each of the respective sites. Uh, this is ground that's been covered many times online, so it's really pointless me covering it again here once more so with all that said that's all the introductions done and out of the way so all you need to do at this point now is pause the video make sure you've got everything that you need installed and ready as we're about to get into the main body of the tutorial all right guys so here we are we're about to start this entire processing tutorial and you should be on your pix inside desktop with all the tools aforementioned installed and ready to go and if you've got the file that i provided downloaded already you should have two separate files within it so you can have m45 tutorial data that's the actual file that we're going to be working on just drag and drop that into the pixie inside desktop anywhere you like and you'll also have a file called tutorial process icons xpsm now basically if you drag and drop that into here you're going to get all of these tools right there so that includes some pre-installed with pixie inside and also some tools created by my good friend bill blanchon that basically I've been using for ages and ages. I think they're fantastic. And I'd want anybody starting out with Pixinsight to have access to these, which is why I've included them in this package for all of you guys to get used to right from day one. So 
you probably know it's in. I've also got a couple of extra tools right here as well. So I've got Noise Exterminator and Star Exterminator. Now, if you have Star Exterminator, great. If you don't, then you're gonna have to use StarNet 2 in its place when I'm using Star Exterminator. And if you don't have Noise Exterminator, which again is more paid software, then in its place, and we will touch upon this during the tutorial, you're gonna have to go to Script, Easy Processing Suite, and use the Easy Denoise Suite. So, let's get stuck into this edit. Now, the first thing is we can't see really anything on this. So we want to hit STF. Now you can do this either up here, STF auto stretch, or I like to actually open the tool and hit this little icon down here. That's gonna be a screen transfer function. That's what it stands for, which I don't really understand what that means, but all you really need to know is it's gonna stretch the image just visually without actually altering the underlying data in any way, which is really, really handy for this type of edit. So once we've hit that, you're gonna notice everything's gone insane green and it's unworkable right at this point, which is completely expected. This is on un uncolor calibrated data. So to deal with this, we're gonna use PCC. This should be included in those uh, files. It stands for photometric color calibration. Basically, this is going to use photometry from online uh, observatories that are provided free for use for all of us. And uh, all you need to do is point it to the correct part of the sky and it's going to color calibrate that region for you with really rather great accuracy. So we are effectively using a broadband target for this. This was shot without filtration from uh, a Bolt 7 location here in my backyard. So broadband rather than narrowband. And for the white reference, we're just gonna leave it set to average spiral galaxy. That's more than good enough for this. Now the coordinates aren't auto-populated in this. They're not stored in the file. So we're gonna have to hit search coordinates and it's already put in here right for me, M45. You'll have to just type that in and hit search. It'll bring up all this information right here from Strasbourg in France, in my case, and hit get. At that point, it's gonna populate the right ascension and declination, both. And you can go ahead and just hit this button over onto it if you like, or as I like to do, I'm also gonna turn off generate graphs because I don't need them. So that's unticked, and we can just now at this point drag this over and wait a few moments. All right, guys, so once that's finished, you should be left with something that looks a lot like this. So once again, you're gonna make sure it's selected and hit that STF icon once more. That's gonna apply a screen stretch. And we can start to evaluate the rest of the issues with this image. So we've got one tick box checked right now. It's in a fairly color calibrated state. So we can go ahead, close down photometric color calibration. We don't need that tool again right now. And we can start to assess the rest of the faults. So. One of the things that stands out straight away is that there's a gradient going from bottom to top in this case. Now, due to Pleiades' uh, orientation, M45, lower down from my location equals closer to the kind of light pollution dome from uh, Earth, and higher up is more directly overhead, so I'm less affected by light pollution for want of a better explanation for all this. Now, that's not the only issue in the image, and there is one we want to take care of first before we tackle that. So. As you can see, I'm just zooming in on the image here, and how you can do that is just by scrolling your mouse wheel effectively. So I'm just gonna scroll in. As you can see, it's a three to one view right now, and I'm gonna move these bars across and check the corners. So like up here, top right corner, you can see, we've got a lot of stacking artifacts. That's these lines right here. That's where all of the frames, the intersection of them all is the main part of the image that you're seeing. And the parts that didn't quite fall accurately onto that after being aligned and stacked up, that's what's left over up here. And we want to crop all of those out. So I'm going to zoom right out to the point where I can see the entire image all at once. I'm going to open up dynamic crop just by clicking on it. So at this point now we can drag from the corners and adjust that crop ever so slightly. So uh, just get yourself a nice little bit taken off the edge. This will be something you have to assess on an image per image basis based on how well you dithered. If it was multiple sessions, then it's common for some more misalignment to creep in there. But basically, you just want to make sure you crop out all of those stacking artifacts. That's all that's important. And just at that point, hit execute. It will pop up with this telling you that the astrometric solution, that's effectively the plate solve, 
that PCC performed on this image is going to be deleted as a result of transforming the image. That's cropping it. And that's absolutely fine. Just hit yes. So now that's finished, we can close the crop tool and now let's tackle that gradient. So as I said, you can see it's really quite a simple gradient. In this case, it's just bottom to top. So to try and deal with this, I'm going to use ABE. That's Automatic Background Extractor. So you open it up and it's going to look something like this. So the target image correction I'm going to use right now is a subtraction. And the function degree, this is a number that you can alter up or down, uh, yeah, I'm going to use this right down as 1, which is what you'd use on the most simple of gradients, which is what this really falls under. It is not a complex gradient really by any means, it's not kind of all mottled here and there, which is when you might want to use a higher function degree so it can tackle more complex gradients. So we're going to use number 1 here and uh, effectively if we just apply that right now, you're going to see it will take out all of that gradient hopefully. And it's also provided us with a background image because I didn't click to discard the background target just for the sake of showing you what it does. And this is what it's taken out of the image. So that gradient should hopefully, if I just hit STF on this, now all be gone. As you can see, it's done a fantastic job. Really, really, really great to see. Now, before moving on from this really quickly, I just want to show you that if you'd use this completely all at default, so it comes on defaulted at a function degree of 4. I will describe the background model for this. Just drag that over. That's finished now. You can see what we're probably going to notice is an overcorrection. So uh, I'm just going to SDF that there. And uh, yeah, right there you can see Pleiades seems to have sunk into the background almost, into a bit of a, a well of darkness. And over here, especially in these corners, uh, it's been hugely overcorrected and we're left with this insane, what looks to be a vignette, but it, it's really not. So it's important to try and assess the gradient that you're dealing with. Again, this is an image by image thing and some experimentation is almost always necessary. It's rare you just drop on uh, right away with the correct solution for any particular gradient problem. Uh, but also it's worth noting that you can apply this at the same setting or different settings multiple times on the same image. Uh, don't be shy to try it out a bunch of different ways. Uh, you can't really harm the data as long as you leave your base file there. You can always go back and try again, which is what I really recommend you do because it's a great way to learn. So what we're left with now is an image that's cropped. All those stacking artifacts are gone. It's pretty well color calibrated, I would say, and also all of the gradients have been removed from the image, but it's still completely linear. As you can see, I've just canceled that SDF there and it's gone back to being pitch black. So I'm just gonna apply the SDF again so it's visible once more. And it's at this point now we're gonna to want to noise reduce this image. Now, if you don't have, as I mentioned, noise exterminator or topaz or anything like that, then you're gonna to want to now use script Easy Processing Suite and Easy Denoise. So click that with the main image selected and it's going to pop up with a window that looks like this. Where it says TGV settings in this uh, window right there, you're going to, going to want to make sure Run TGV Denoise is selected. Otherwise this tool won't work at all. And then at that point you could effectively just hit Run Easy Denoise and go take about a 10 or 15 minute break or so is this is a really quite a big image uh, i took this with the 2600 mc and it's going to take a while to process unless you're using a blisteringly fast pc now for the sake of this tutorial and it's what i'm used to i'm going to use noise exterminator for this and before i do that i also want to kind of just analyze the noise just a little bit just by looking at it nothing scientific so at a one-to-one -one view this is how you're commonly going to view an image it's actually not that noisy in the first place, but there is some grain to it, which I'd like to get rid of. So in that case, I'm going to use less than the default. So maybe right down here about 50% on the denoise. I'll leave the detail slider alone, but I do want to select that it's linear data because we know that it is at this point. So the next thing to do is just drag this over onto the main image and wait for it to finish. 
All right, guys, so picking up now, you can see the noise reduction uh, process is finished and it's done a fantastic job. I really do rate noise exterminator highly, especially if all you really are noise reducing is just Astro Images. It works fantastic and, uh, you know, I think it's a great bit of software. Um, I also sometimes like to use Topaz, um, which if you're interested in using that kind of thing, yeah, I do have an affiliate link in the description box down below, which if you use really helps my channel out. But I think really probably if you're just processing Astro Images only, uh, like to just stick to Noise Exterminator and get 95% of the results. But as I use it for many other things, terrestrial photography included, it made sense to have Topaz for me. But that aside, anyway, we can pick up with where we left off. Now, this is still a linear image. It's noise reduced, color calibrated, uh, gradient removed and cropped. The next step in processing this right now is actually going to be make it non linear so there are two ways that you could go about this i'll just make a clone really quickly and you can do that just by dragging the identifier from the left hand side out into open work area or on top of another image and you'll create a clone like this this is exactly the same image so the two ways you can go about stretching an image really are by using the histogram transformation tool you'd want to make sure you've got that clone selected in this case open up a preview window by selecting the little circular icon and then you can drag the midpoint to the left that's going to start stretching it hit apply i'll have to reset the stf from this thing so you can actually see these uh adjustments that i'm making reset the tool and start dragging once again now this is an iterative process it will take some time to get right and uh, it's a little bit of a fine art to be quite honest with you. to get this right takes some time and some practice um, I'm used to doing it so it's not really too bad but for anybody just starting out I absolutely recommend that you don't bother with this method instead what I would say that you should do is do away with that completely instead so we're gonna select this main image open up once again the scripts section easy processing suite and go to easy soft stretch i really like this tool so just all defaults i'm going to hit run easy soft stretch and it's going to take it through a really nice process and get it to this kind of stage you can see i can just go ahead and close my uh, really quick effort at stretching there we don't need that anymore we're going to use this one the easy soft stretch version it's done a fantastic job so the next problems in this image there aren't really that many left i would say um it looks a little bit drab perhaps the uh, the color is slightly more tealy rather than nice blue white which you might commonly see on images of m45 so we're going to want to change that and also the background is maybe slightly purple now to create that background we're going to touch upon that in just a moment and we're actually going to use a tool uh, that's not intended for that really at all it's, it's in scripts utilities and it's called correct magenta stars and it's really actually meant for correcting the magenta stars that commonly pop up in hubble palette images when you're using narrowband filters but it also does a great job when used incorrectly <laughs> of getting rid of background casts like this purple cast that we're seeing right here on this image now before I go ahead and do that, I think this could do with a little bit of a curves alteration just to kind of make that foreground pop ever so slightly more. So I'm going to open up the curves tool right there with this main image selected. Once again, open up a real time preview by selecting the little icon there. And now I'm going to talk you through really quickly what the curves tool does and how you can use it. So you may just see I've selected the RGB and K that's going to adjust effectively everything in this image apart from the saturation now up at the top here on this line which you can alter higher values right up here are going to affect the brightest parts of the image lowers down here right at the bottom of this line they're going to affect the darkest parts in the image and we can use that to our advantage you can also put pips on this to kind of lock certain parts of the tool in place you can see i'm making just adjustments on the low end right there and you could do the same at the top just adjustments on the top not that you'd want to do that commonly uh, but we can really use all of these to our advantage uh, based on what it is that you're imaging and uh, effectively processing so 
A common adjustment, a really common adjustment in fact, is an S curve. So we're gonna lift up the highlights ever so slightly and drop down the shadow end of things again, just a touch. So if I just go and cycle this preview a few times, you can see M45 is starting to kind of leap out from that background ever so slightly and all this background kind of gas and dust that it's embedded in is also coming to the forefront ever so slightly more, making this a more dynamic image. So I want that. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that just very gently. I'm not gonna go crazy right now. And another thing I want is to bring up the saturation ever so slightly. So once again, I'm gonna select this part of the tool, the S right there, that's saturation. So it works just the same, bring it up, it'll saturate things, bring it down, it'll desaturate them. You probably notice if I bring it right up here and get a little bit crazy with it, it gets super saturated and also the background does too. So it's not discriminatory in any way. It's gonna saturate the whole thing and that's not really what we want. We, would, we want a small amount of background saturation to bring life to these stars, which I'm gonna take care of right now. So that's gonna look something like that. I would say is decent so i'm going to apply that but i am going to stop at that for saturation at this point so instead we're now going to switch over to using a different tool for all this we're still going to use curves but we're going to mask off this image first so you'll notice as part of those tools that i uh, provided for you to use are the color masks pack from Bill Blanchon. Now, because this is blue, the part I want to mask out, I'm going to use the blue mask. And it really is as simple as just dragging it onto the image, dropping it on and waiting. All right, the masking tool is now finished. As you can see, it's generated as a nice mask representing what's blue in this image and above a certain value. It's quite holy pinholes all over the place. And we don't really want that at this point. So you'll notice also included is a mask blur. You can simply drag and drop that onto the image and work through a few iterations of blurring this thing out ever so slightly. So it's going to make any transitions between masked and unmasked areas in your image that much softer and harder to detect in a final image. So once you're happy with the state of your mask, you can apply a mask to an image by simply dragging this part of the image, the identifier segment, over just below the target images identifier. So in this case, we've dragged it just below there. And because it's gone red and we can see just that part of the image, that mask has now been applied. You don't have to use a mask exactly like this. You can invert it as well. So maybe I want to leave that blue part alone, in which case you go to mask and invert. And you can do that cyclically if you wish to work on different parts of the image. But I do want to work on the blue part. So I'm going to leave it alone. I hope this isn't too confusing to follow. Again, open a, uh, a transformation window there for the preview. And now if I adjust this uh, curves transformation wildly, you can see we're only working on that blue segment. It's not affecting the background anymore, no matter what I do with it. So you could really get crazy with this if you wanted. Now, I don't want to go too outlandish with this and have it start to look unreal. So instead, I'm just going to bring it up just a touch there. Again, I'm going to monitor what I'm doing by unselecting and reselecting as you can see it's going from looking slightly more drab to slightly more colorful that's perfect i don't want to go over the top with this i am going to go ahead and apply that in just a moment but before i do while i've still got just this blue selected i want to bring it out yet another step so to do that i'm actually going to select just the blue channel in this case and bring it just up ever so slightly so you can see the effect that that's having it's making it kind of leap out more. If I dragged it the other way, you'd see the other color channels that start to take over. So now it becomes green dominant. If I drag it right up this way, it starts to become wildly blue slash almost a slight purple tint to it. And that's not really what you're looking for. So I just want that little bit more blue in there to make it kind of slightly more balanced. That to me is looking really rather cool right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that. What it will do, is it'll also apply that saturation at the same time all at once. So let's go ahead and hit the square. All right, now that's finished, I'm gonna go ahead, reset the tool, close the curves transformation for now, and we can close this mask because we're kind of finished with it now. So close all that down and the image is looking 
pretty good at this point so there are a few more things i want to work on so the background could use some scnr that's subtractive chrominance noise reduction you can just simply think of this as as i do as removing green from an image i don't want to use it kind of at full strength but maybe about 60 percent or so just drag and drop that on as you can see that's altered the color balance significantly in the background there which is what we wanted and most of that purple cast is gone but still a little bit remains so i am going to use that script that i talked to you about so script utilities correct magenta stars and just hit execute all on defaults for this and then you can see it's got rid of again that background cast so between scnr and that kind of correct magenta stars i know it's that's what it's called but what we've used it for is different to that but now between them we've got a really nice neutral space gray background while completely preserving the color of the dust and the nebula itself it's worked out fantastic now the next part of this image for me is probably going to be a little bit of star reduction and once again thanks to bill we do have some fantastic tools for this so the first thing you're going to want to do is drag this tool right here which says clone for stylus just drag it and drop it onto your main image that's going to create a clone already pre-named stylus and the next thing you want to do to this now is use star exterminator or star net 2 again all the defaults you don't really have to change anything we don't need a star mask from this just drag and drop it okay we've waited a little bit there and star exterminator is now finished taking all of the stars out of that image that we just created which was again automatically named starless so i'm just going to move that to one side right now reselect this main image and we're going to kind of judge for ourselves now how each of these star reduction methods version one version two and version three or rather method one two and three are going to work so i'm just going to try them in sequence live for you guys to see so we're going to start with method one and it's just simply a case of dragging and dropping okay so method one there is complete and i really do like this one it seems to work really quite well i'm going to undo that that's just a case of right click and undo and i'm going to try now method two once again uh, that finished in record time and it's looking pretty good. I wouldn't say it looks quite as neat as method one did So I'm gonna go ahead and try method three in just a second And now that's finished I have to say that's likely my favorite of them all uh, It looks the most natural on this image and that's absolutely the one that I'm gonna be going with It's just toned those stars down just a little bit. You see if I go back and fourth just a couple of times while you watch the image you can see the effect that that's had the stars have just been diminished ever so slightly as they don't really want to be the main focus of this image we were photographing a target rather than just purely stars so uh, now we're at this point now we're in the case really of final touch-ups that are needed so i'm going to go ahead and close down this starless image we don't need that anymore now i'm kind of finished with star reduction but i'm not finished just yet with the star removal tools so i'm going to go ahead and open up star exterminator if you are using starnet you'll have to do the equivalent i do in this case want to generate a star image so i think that's called create star mask on starnet 2 and i just want to drag and drop that over onto this main image right now all right then guys so that's now finished so there's a reason that i wanted to do this and we are going to put these stars back in in just a moment so i'm actually going to give this an easy identifier so right click it click select the identifier and in this case i'm just going to call it what it is just stars and minimize that for now get it off the screen and uh, less lessen the visual clutter as you can see we've got this starless one right here so i'm just going to again right click identifier and call it starless once that's finished I want to make a small curves adjustment to this to try and bring out that background dust ever so slightly even further really i want this to stand out so i'm going to open up curves again make sure this image is selected and select the real time preview i'm using the rgbk segment of, of curves for this and i'm just going to start simply 
by dragging up the middle and we're going to take a look at what this does to the image so if i go too far we're going to blow out the core of pleiades and it starts to look quite bad but there is enough dynamic range in this image where we can take it a little bit further than it was without blowing those stars out so because we're going to do this now and put the stars back in after as long as you don't make too dramatic adjustments to this they should blend back in completely seamlessly and it'll be effectively undetectable uh, that we ever did anything in the first place so you can see the effect that that has had it's really brightened things up a lot i'm not going to try and bring down the shadows using this as i'm afraid i'm going to squash the image too much so instead i'm going to use histogram for that so i'll apply this as is reset the curves tool close that down close the preview open up the histogram window with this window selected so stylus that's the one i actually want to work on open a preview and i'm going to drag this left hand side across to the right ever so slightly so you can see the effect that we're directly having on this image if you just keep an eye on that preview window if i go too far we start to clip the blacks and it looks bad and if we don't do anything at all it's kind of too bright you know space isn't that bright um so around about there is looking pretty good to my eye it's certainly making that image more dynamic so i'm going to apply that it's good practice to reset your tool close everything down and at this point i want to put those stars back in once again so process pixel math and just select it if you've got a load of writing in here and things like that from previous tools you just want to hit the reset button right there and that'll get rid of everything open up where it says destination and click create a new image that way we can have multiple attempts at this without really worrying about anything being uh, irreversibly damaged and quite simply we're going to type in this starless plus stars couldn't be simpler and just hit apply on there so now you can see it's popped those stars back into the image while making that background dust really really start to stand out now i think at this point we've got a practically completed image because noise exterminator doesn't take too long to apply i would personally be applying that once more to this uh, again just analyzing the noise probably around about 50 percent or so would do the job so for completeness i will do that okay and noise exterminator is now finished and it's done a really fine job actually uh, and i'm basically completely happy now with this image and i think hopefully that should have been uh, fairly easy to follow along with for all you guys at home now i can absolutely understand if you wouldn't want to sit through uh, another kind of run around of um easy denoise as that takes significantly longer than this to apply um but maybe on your own personal final images you might want to do that to get the absolute most out of them so with that said i think that really is the end of the tutorial the last thing to do now is to save this out so you simply go to file and save as and just give it a name and hit save and choose the file type also it's really simple just like saving in any other program and then you'd have an image that you could share with friends family online or whatever you like um if you found this useful then please please do me a huge favor and just leave a like and a comment if you have the time that would be fantastic as all those interactions from you guys really help send positive signals to youtube that my videos are reasonably good they should be watched and they help me reach as many people as is possible which is what i really want for this channel because i'm having so much fun growing it and it's all thanks to you guys so with that said i think that's about everything now and i'd just like to say before i sign off Thank you so much for watching and for all your support in all the ways that you guys give it. Um, so until the next time, look after yourselves and Cliss guys.